Good day, my name is Sky, and I appreciate you spending some study time with me. I'm here to help you make money in online poker by teaching you key strategies and getting you to take action. So I'm excited to bring you today's episode because I'm going to target something that was a huge leak for me for a very long time, and that was committing chips to the pot when I was confused as to what was going on, what is my opponent doing, what kind of hand does my opponent have, just calling because I couldn't fold, right? Maybe sometimes just betting or just raising without really thinking, but mostly it comes from confused calls, right? So if this is an issue of yours, I'm definitely going to help you with today's episode. Uh, go to the show notes page, smartpokerstudy.com slash pod. 444 to help you take notes with everything that you learn. And without further ado, let's uh, do this gambate. Everybody just stay calm. I can handle this. No problem. I know how to deal. License and registration, please. What seems to be the officer problem? So I love the song Right Place, Wrong Time by Dr. John. I would play it for you right now, but I just don't understand... Uh, podcast music rules and and content whatever right but you can look it up right place wrong time if you saw the movie sahara uh it was the one that played during the title sequence right there in by dr john but two lines in the song stand out to me he goes refried confusion is making itself clear wonder which way do i go to get on out of here so those two lines remind me of how i used to play losing poker uh for example i would face a river bet and I just did not know how to respond. I was kind of confused as to what my opponent had. Um, I didn't know how my hand stacked up against his hand, or not his hand, I guess his range. I, I didn't even think about ranges at the time, right? And when I would face that kind of river bet, I didn't replay the action of the hand in order to kind of figure out what he could possibly had, right? I just basically thought about my hand and the board at the time. And this isn't just river, this is flop turn river pre-flop every time, right? Just confused poker and throwing out calling chips. When I didn't know what to do, I often end up calling the player's bet. Um, And this is often because I didn't want to fold, uh, because I didn't want to be bluffed off the hand. Everybody hates getting bluffed, right? And I didn't know if I should raise for value with whatever my hand was or even raise as a bluff. So the only logical decision was to call, right? Well, Calling is a bad decision when you're confused about the situation. Committing chips when you don't know what's going on, it just ends up giving value to your opponents and causes you to remain a losing player like I was for a very long time. Here's a a, a true situation that happened to me uh, about calling on the river. Actually, calling on flop turn and river here. Um, Here's the hand. I had pocket kings under the gun. I open raised. Everybody folded except for an unknown big blind player. I had almost no information on this player. He ended up calling my raise. I had pocket kings from under the gun. Now, we see the flop. I'm in position with my kings, but the flop comes 5-3 deuce rainbow. The big blind checked, and I decided to see bet half pot going for value, and then he check raised three times my bet. Now, at the time, pocket kings, how can I fold to a check race? I got a call. Like, that was literally the only thing that was going through my mind. Pocket kings, got a call, I call. We went to the turn. The pot was 26 big blinds. The deuce of hearts came. So the board was 5-3 deuce deuce with two hearts. I did have the king of hearts, but that doesn't play into my decision uh, uh, at at all in this hand. 5-3 deuce deuce two hearts. So... 26 big blinds in the pot. He bets 19 into me and I'm in position. So, hey, I've got pocket kings. I can't fold. I call once again, just calling without putting him on a hand, without thinking about what his actions are actually trying to tell me here. Now, on that river, man, that pot was huge. Uh, 65 big blind pot. Um, The three of diamonds hit the river, making the final board five, three, deuce, deuce, three. Flush doesn't get there or anything, but it's a double paired board. So full houses, straights are still possible as well. My opponent fired on the river 32.4 big blinds into the 65 big blind pot. Exactly, half pot. Now, in my head, 
you know, I'm thinking, well, I've come this far. He decreased his bet on the river. Maybe he's making a desperate bluff, right? He went from 75% turn, 75% pot on the turn to half pot on the river. Okay, I guess I can call with pocket kings. Maybe he's trying to bluff with an ace high, um, like with the ace of hearts, potentially. Or maybe he has pocket nines or eights and I'm ahead of him. Well, once I call, that pot was 130 big blinds total and he shows ace four for a flopped straight, and he check race flop, bet big on the turn, didn't want me to fold on that river. He got so much value, about 65-ish big blinds from me. Now, you might look at a situation like this and just chalk it up to being a cooler, right? You could say to yourself, well, my kings lost to ace four when they flopped a straight. Oh, well, But if that's as far as your thinking goes, uh, you're missing out on opportunity for growth and you're going to continue to call and lose with reasons like that. Well, I have an overbear. I got a call. And then you lose again. Oh, the next hand. I got an overbear. Got a call. You lose again. So let's go back to that river before we called. Remember the board was five, three, deuce, deuce, three. I've got pocket kings. He's triple barreling. Before any big calling decision, especially on rivers when mistakes are the costliest, you need to do these two things. Thing number one is remove your hand from your mouse or your poker chips if you're playing live, right? This gives your brain a little space to think more deeply about the situation. You don't want Tommy Angelo's finger tilt to take over and just auto-click call without thinking. The second thing you need to do is replay the action of the hand, kind of as if you were a sports announcer, right? If you're playing online, you could do this out loud in front of your computer. If you're in a poker room, mentally replay the hand through your head. The the sports announcer might say something like this. He completed the action with his call in the big blind, so he has a pretty wide range. He check-raised me three times my C-bet on the flop. Ooh, that smells like a set, a straight, or even two pair. Most other hands including pocket fours on the five, three deuce or pocket nines or ace jack, they're often just going to check call to continue cheaply. So he probably doesn't have one of those hands from out of position. He bet 75% pot when the board paired the turn. He's probably not scared of that two of hearts, or maybe it helped him my turn call. And by not re-raising, I signify that I have an over pair or maybe some kind of a draw that I don't want to give up on. And then on the river, he fired a third bet. He triple barreled me big time on that three of diamonds, double paired river. Sure, he decreased it to just half pot, but altogether he's committing over 60 big blinds on this double paired three to the straight board. So you have to ask yourself, Sky, does he do this with a worse hand than pocket kings? Well, I didn't know enough about him to know he's capable of this ultra aggressive line from out of position. So my reasoning should have ended up with, I think he's got me beat. So I have to fold right here. So when we do that, when we pretend we're a poker announcer and we replay the action of the hand, we add a little bit of logic behind our opponent's actions. And then it all makes sense. I should have seen that my once beautiful pocket Kings It was absolutely crushed here, and folding is the only play on that river. It's critical that you develop the ability to replay the action of the hand to take you from a sense of confusion to one of understanding and certainty. This skill, it allows you to step outside of the action and outside of your emotions, and it helps you to rationally view the situation to see the truth of what your opponent is probably holding. It allows you to pay attention to what their actions are actually trying to tell you. So the action of any hand is a puzzle. But as you mentally replay it and think about the range of hands that logically fits his prior actions, the pieces come together and the picture ends up becoming clear. This makes it so much easier to choose the right play. And it's a key reason why I teach hand reading in my book, Post Flop Online Poker. I lead up to it in Pre Flop Online Poker, that first book, about talking about ranges and everything, pre flop ranges. But in book number two, Post Flop Online Poker, we really dive into the hand reading process. And I want to give a shout out to some um, awesome poker peeps that recently bought those two books. Patrick Keveny, David Eichinger, Jeremy Perna, Damian Saber, Derek Frady, Arturo Maldonado, Nils, Nils Bauer, Peter Oten, William Johnson, Michelle Kovacevic, Timo Dietrich, George Weissman, and 
Yaroslav Vrana purchased all four of my books recently. Thank you guys so much. If you want to get these books for yourself, either through Gumroad, so you can get the um, uh, uh, PDF and the audiobook versions, or you could just go directly to Amazon as well. Just go to the show notes page for today, smartpokerstudy.com slash pod 444. There's links right there for you. All righty. So here's a really important strategy that I want to take with you, that I want you to take with you beyond this podcast. From now on, when you encounter a situation and you feel confused, realize that that's a sign that you need to work on that area. So I want you to tag these hands for study. If you're playing live, record the details in a notes app like Evernote, right? So that you can review the hand later on. If you're playing online, Tag the hand so you can easily find it for your next study session. And of course, with Poker Tracker 4, I recommend that you create a new tag and just name the tag Confused and start using it. And wouldn't you know it, that leads me to this week's challenge. Challenge! Here's my challenge to you for this episode. For the rest of this week, tag any confusing hands that you play. Remember that confusion is a sign that your skills are lacking. So let's work this week to build skills in confusing spots. So if it's river calling, like my example hand from today, what a great thing to realize about yourself. You review a ton of bad river calling spots in order to turn this from a confusing situation to one that you're well-versed and you know what to do. Also, of course, go online, find videos, articles, uh, books, book chapters about calling rivers so that you can study and learn some good strategies. Heck, you can even go on Facebook or your favorite Discord server, ask your poker friends how they approach these river spots. The goal here is to build your skills and lessen your confusion this week for a more fun poker journey. Now it's your turn to take action and do something positive for your poker game. Oh, that's it now. Get out there and be somebody. Go write a book. All righty. Thank you so much for listening today. Go to the show notes page to help you take notes at smartpokerstudy.com slash pod 444. And to really help you improve your game, you've got to become a member of thepokerforge.com. It's my one-of-a-kind poker training site where I combine strategy, action steps, quizzes, and play demonstrations like no other with my nine masterclass courses and all of the bonus content. We even have monthly uh, group coaching Q&As and monthly Forge uh, member-only tournaments. Go to thepokerforge.com right now for more information and to sign up today. Until next time, take action both on and off the felt to become the player that you want to be.